Hi everybody, welcome to the third and final part of this tutorial for drawing this floor plan. This is a ground floor from this project architecture. Before starting the next chapter, I'm going to add an arrow to the staircase to indicate the direction that goes up to the first floor. So, as this is a group, I can go to the group panel and click on the icon to ungroup. Then. I click on the icon on the layer panel to isolate the layer. Click on any object of the layer staircase and all the remaining layers are locked. To draw the arrow, I start making lines from the, this right side of the stairs, go horizontally to the left, move down and draw until here. Then just draw a diagonal line from the last endpoint and then use the command mirror to draw the other side. How to organize the layout tabs? Now let's learn how to prepare the layout pages to print our projects. By default, two layout tabs are included in our file. And by, def and by default, they comprise everything that we have in the workspace. Then, it's important to understand what's the size of this paper. So, with the right button, we can go to the Page Setup Manager and on this window, we choose the Layout tab that we want to edit. For now, I select Layout 1 and click on Modify. So, this is the Page Setup Manager. And there are some options to edit here. On the first tab, we can select a printer name or if we want to convert to a PDF file, we click on this option, DWG to PDF. Below, we choose the paper size. Let's go with ISO Full Bleed A3. Remember, ISO is for the metrical system, the units here are on millimeters. So, full bleed is a good option if we just want to convert to a digital format, like a PDF. It doesn't come with any margin. However, for printing, it's better to choose the normal ISO. If I click on ISO A3, these margins show up. And then, we shouldn't have anything outside this area. They may not fit on the paper when we print. Editing layout objects. On the page itself, we have a viewport, which is this rectangle here. It shows what is the part of the model space that we want to print. At this moment, we are on the paper mode, as it's indicated on the status bar. We can move the paper, zoom or draw objects. If we print this layout, this is exactly what will appear on the paper. Then we can double click inside the viewport to switch to the model space. You can now see the same controls that we have on the normal workspace. Now pay attention to this. Each time that we zoom in or zoom out, the scale of the drawing changes, as you can see here. However, to set a precise scale, we should click on that arrow and select the scale that we desire. If I don't find the one that I want in this list, I can always click on custom and create it. For this drawing, I'm going to choose one per 100. Now let's reposition the viewport on the paper. I double click outside to switch to the paper space. Then I delete this line. With the command move, I put a viewport a bit up. Then by selecting it, I can resize it by clicking on the grips. Let's leave it like this. The next step is creating the title block. This is something I don't need to make on the model work workspace as it's not actually a drawing. I just want to put it in all the layout pages. So I decide to create a special layer for it. I go to the Layer Properties Manager and add a new layer called Title Block. 
Now you can draw the title block with legend, project information and so on. Here you can draw it by following the measurements available on the PDF file, but that's something you can personalize by yourself. Title block. First, I'm going to draw the line at the left, which is going to be the boundary. The distance from the right is 60 mm. Here I press F8 to switch to the Orso mode and click on this point. Then we are going to insert text, but this time I'm going to the Annotate tab and click on this icon to access the text style. Here on this window I'm going to create two new styles, but I want them to be annotated. I go to New, choose for the first one Title Block Big. Then I tick on Annotate. And now in this blank I have to insert the paper text height. That's the real size after printing. It's exactly what you can measure on the paper. I want it to be 3 mm. Then for the second style I put the name Title Block Small and the paper text height 2 mm. Then I go to Apply to close this window. To start inserting the text for the legend, I choose the style that I want, title block big, so my text height is going to be the 3mm. Then with the command single line text, I go somewhere here, click for the start point, then I just need the rotation angle, which is zero. I draw as simply a horizontal line. Then I type the prompt to insert a client name. With the multiline text now, I insert a box for this corner until more or less here. Here is where I put the client name and the client address. Then I copy all these objects below and change the first text to John and the multi text here to drafter name. Next I copy all together and edit them in the same way as it is on the PDF file. The scale and date use the text style title block small. Then, then I insert a multi-line text with two lines, scale and date. Then I draw a line at a distance of 40 mm to divide this part. And another one here. You can do it with the command of set. Another thing, if you want to add the logo of a company and you have it in your computer as an image file, you can go to the insert tab, then attach an image, select the image that you want, this one, then when I insert, I specify the scale factor that I desire. Here I want it as 0.2. Finally, I move the block to the top and insert the text CAD in black. And to change the text height after making the text, I go to the quick properties and change the value here. Now I just move a bit to the left and the title block is finished. Ah, there was a remaining line here. Add dimension lines to the floor plan. In this viewport, the dimension lines will look like this. Basically, I want them to have the text height that is visible in the paper. For that, I need annotative dimensions. Let's go to the Layer Properties Manager and create a new layer for dimension lines. As you can see, I have created this one, DLI. Go to the Annotate tab and on the Dimensions panel, go to the Dimension Style Manager. Choose the Annotative Style, click on Modify. Then here, I go to the Text tab 
I specify the text height as 1.8 and on symbols and arrows I specify the same value for the arrow size. Finally, on lines, I put a tick on fixed length for extension lines and set the value 3 mm. Then, to add annotative dimensions, I need to specify here the same scale of the viewport that I want the dimensions to show up. 1 100. Then, I start drawing the dimensions on the floor plan. I click on these two points for the first dimension. Then I move up and click again to place it. As you can see, the extension line have now a fixed length. Then, to draw the dimension lines which are all together on the same side, I click on this icon continue and the new dimension line starts from the last point. So, you can check how I can easily put dimensions here, until I reach the other end. When I finish, I just press escape. Now, oh, I want to move the dimensions a bit up. So, to do that, I isolate the, the layer, the Li, click on isolate, then in any object of that layer and use the command move for doing that. Now it's better. Important note, with the function dim layer, I can define a layer that will contain the new dimension objects that I create. I specify layer DLI, and what happens is if my current layer is Windows, if I create a dimension line, it's automatically placed within the layer DLI. Let's switch again to the Layout 1 tab. You can see the dimension lines there because this viewport is with the same scale as the annotative dimension lines. If, on the other hand, I would have a viewport with a different scale, for example 1 per 50, the dimensions don't appear. Another curiosity here, the dimension lines are in front of all the other objects. How to bring them back? Select the dimension line. Then click with the right button. Go to select similar. And this option selects all similar objects and in this case it's all the dimension lines. Then with the right button again, go to draw order and click on send to back. Now all the dimension lines are under the remaining objects. How to change the colors of the layers to print? On the layer properties manager, I can change the VP color, which is the viewport color, for each layer. But of course, I need to have the viewport active, otherwise it will not work. Let's change the DLI layer to grey, then the windows, walls, stairs, I want them to appear in black. I choose this option white. And why this one? Because this color is white on the model space and it turns automatically black when you go to the paper space. So this is the result, the floor plan with all the dimensions on this viewport. Now, to finish this tutorial, let's give to you a couple of tips. Lock the current viewport in this icon to keep the current scale, so I can zoom and move without any issues. It may look like that I am on the paper space, but you can see that it says model here at the status bar and the controls at the top of the viewport. Then I can rename the layout tabs to be easier to recognize them. For example, this one I can name as ground floor A3. So we reached the end of this floor plan. Now check out the other exercises videos step by step in order to keep practicing. For example, the one that appears on the card above. Thank you very much and till the next video and subscribe if you forgot to do it.